for another episode of the Freedom Train Podcast Series. Really going down in the south. <sighs> and the crowd goes wild as I take my shirt off. Hey, man. Oh. We're back for another episode of the Freedom Train Podcast Series. I am Joseph Ward. He is Mr. Patrick or Darius Irvin. And we're here to give y'all another great podcast talk about some issues that's going on in the community yeah heard me and remember that the freedom train podcast series is brought to you by pax inc that's p-a-c-t-s-i-n-c and pax inc is a black development organization aimed at developing the black community to its maximum potential through a focus on education and economics with the trace of hard work honesty and integrity for more information make sure you visit their website at www.freedomtrainradio. i mean www.pactsinc.org that's the Pax Inc. <laughs> website that way you can learn more about the, inf- about the organization how to become a part of the organization how you can donate how you can um utilize the code of conduct that they've created to help black america work more as a cohesive unit they have a stout learning center with a lot of good information ranging from um Black history and other information given through audio means, political information, books you can read, audio books you can listen to, survival information, legal cases, all those things there. And also the Amazon Smile program is connected with PAX Inc. Amazon Smile basically is an initiative that Amazon has that when you buy items, whatever you buy for Amazon, if you sign up through the Amazon Smile program, you can select a nonprofit organization to have a portion of your proceeds to be donated to. So every time you go to Amazon, type in On the Shoulders of Giants, Joseph Ward, and you buy all three of my volumes of my book, On the Shoulders of Giants, volume one, two, and three, bam, a portion of the proceeds go there. Or if you go to Amazon and you type in The Chasm, Patrick Irving, and you buy the book, portion of the proceeds go to Pax Inc. So whatever you buy, be an Amazon that just sign up through Amazon Smile, so a portion of your proceeds help the organization. Right. Also, make sure y'all visit our Freedom Train website at www.freedomtrainradio.com where you can learn about all the things that we got going on here at the Freedom Train Pod. I mean, at the Freedom Train Network. This show every Wednesday, the Freedom Train Podcast Series, the Fix Sports Podcast, Lessons from the Screen, the Enigma Sept Hour, and Shelby's World. And be looking out maybe around January 3rd. January 3rd, maybe. Got some, got a live network show for y'all doing live podcasts to start the new year off. Uh, we want to do something a little different. Of course, you know, it's going to be our end of the year recap, our yearly recap, but we're going to do it with everybody. Maybe. What you say, Pat? Maybe. Maybe. You know what I'm saying? Maybe. Show up. Maybe. 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 So be looking out for the live January 3rd. You heard me? What it is, Al Darius? What's up, man? How you doing today, bro? I'm doing good. I'm trying to make sure that for once in a show, my levels match yours. My level got to match your level. Because you be loud as shit. No, my spirit loud. Hey, uh, on some other shit, though. Mm-hmm. I did check out that uh, The Fix episode with mm-hmm. the... Um, the greatest college football joint. Uh-huh. Y'all definitely go check that out. That's an entertaining show. I actually hey. watched it like three or four times. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I got, I get caught up in it too. I ain't gonna front. Like it's my <laughs> shit, but I get caught up into it because after we recorded it, that same night, I went and watched it before the, the all before you jazzed it up and everything. And I'm just, I realized, damn, the show almost over. Like, but then going back and watching it after the, all the edits and everything, I'm driving in the car and I realized, damn, this shit almost over because it's in, it is entertaining, especially when we get into talking about the teams and the stuff. So, yeah, man, y'all check it out. The Fix Sports Podcast is really going down. Make sure y'all check out all the episodes of Lessons from the Screen. Pat be spitting knowledge. He be going and he be trying to be humble, but you're hey, going to learn something. Lessons from the Screen is actually on a hiatus. For not a hiatus, it's a break. It's a low way. Seasons kicked off, um, and just we got a lot going on on Freedom Train. Period. So, but so um, you know, Freedom Train packs. It's a lot going on in general. So that show is well, it'll be back. 
we going we coming back after Christmas. Right, right. Back. Right, but, after yeah, yeah. After criminal. Yeah. So, after criminal. You know what? I guess it wasn't really no point in saying that. What do the lonely do for Christmas? They cry and drink eggnog. Hang out with me. So <laughs> <laughs> Hey <man. laughs> Hey, we got a so we got we got something for y'all today where we wanna get into some of these social discussion topics, these topics that's going on in the world today. Um so we our mention is gonna be the rumblings that we heard that's going on with Black Lives Matter and Black some of the Lives chapters. Matter. It's either some of the chapters are speaking out because they are not receiving funding or people may have donated to the wrong foundation. I don't know. But according to the headlines and all these things here. But as far as our topics that we're going to get into, uh, the gentleman Brandon Bernard was executed after the, the Supreme Court had denied a request for a delay. Um, so we're going to get into the Brandon Bernard story and, you know, talk about it from different perspectives. We're going to get into the latest. I know I know we'll be talking about COVID, but we got to keep y'all updated. Um, so Pfizer has put out their COVID vaccine. And a couple people develop Bell's palsy. So the question is, did they develop Bell's palsy because of the vaccine? Or did something else trigger it? But we know it happened after they took the vaccine. And also, there's a black lady with a Caribbean accent who was on all on TV and social media this couple last couple of days because she took the vaccine. So we're gonna talk about that. And our last topic is water is now being traded uh, within the market, within the financial market. So water futures as a commodity, water as a commodity is now being traded. So what does that mean for the world's water supply if water is now a commodity that's being traded? So is you ready, Pat? Yeah, buddy. Rolling like a big shot. Chevy mm. tuned up like a NASCAR pit stop. Yeah, buddy. We read it like Pastor Troy. I remember it was was in um, high school. <laughs> was playing <laughs> JV football. We had lost a couple games at around time that Pastor Troy. We ready came, out. and we used to, that used to be our, our chant. We ready, Coach. I don't want to hear no more that damn. We ready, y'all. Last is out here losing. Y'all ain't ready for shit. You ain't good. I don't want to hear no more that goddamn. We ready. Like goddamn coach. coach Samson. You know it. <laughs> <laughs> like goddamn coach. Let us be hype. <laughs> nah, I want to hear no more of that damn we ready. Y'all ain't ready. <laughs> <laughs> Negative. <laughs> All right. So Black Lives Matter. So according to some of the information that I came across uh in the last couple of days. And then, like I said, according to this information, since the George Floyd death, Black Lives Matter overall as the foundation or as the organization has received like the four million or over four million in donations. Uh, yeah, four, this is saying donors tried to send an estimated 4.35 million to the California based nonprofit called the Black Lives Matter Foundation. Um, so according to BuzzFeed News, and this is an article I'm reading on marketwatch.com, uh, but uh, they're saying according to Buzz, BuzzFeed News, who, re, who I guess one of the initial outlets to report it, um, that the Black Lives Matter Foundation has no connection with the Black Lives Matter social justice movement. So most of the money didn't end up at Black Lives Matter Foundation because officials at companies involved in raising the cash realized the mistake and froze the funding. The incident shines a light on the growing role that third party companies play in collecting the district in the, collecting and distributing roughly 300 billion uh, that individual Americans give to charity each year. It's also a reminder that it pays to do your own research about any organization you want to give money to, especially if you're donating through online fundraising platforms or employee matching programs. But before I even get into a lot more, so there's a 
there's a Black Lives Matter foundation. Right. Is that's that's the one with the website that we go to? They have a website, but that's not the one with the website that 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 we go to. Okay. So Black Lives Matter Foundation and the Black Lives Matter organization that was started by the three black ladies. Two different yeah. two separate things. Two separate things. The Black Lives Matter movement and the Black Lives Matter Foundation are two separate things. Now, right, but also remember, there's a Black Lives Matter movement that's separate from the Black Lives Matter organization, which is separate from the Black Lives Matter Foundation. Well, for the purpose, for the legal purposes of the discussion, there is the Black Lives Matter movement, mm -hmm. and then the Black Lives Matter Foundation. Now, the Black Lives Matter movement that we're all familiar with, as far as us in the in the black pro black black nationalist black all of these other di that is separate from the black lives matter movement that is right. a legal entity okay so, that's yeah. why that that's why that kind of threw me off a bit because i was like right but we don't see but legally the way they're organized there's a foundation then there's a legal i guess legal legally built movement but then no there's also a movement in the streets yes okay 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 so so money was donated to the black lives matter foundation right and so how familiar are you with the black lives matter foundation not very um i've heard when i first started researching black lives matter the movement i stumbled into the black lives matter foundation um right. but i didn't really look too much into it because i viewed it as at the time i just viewed it as another organization trying to capitalize off of the death of black people and it wasn't something that i was interested in at the moment i was interested in the black lives matter movement because they were at the time i think it was like 20 2015 26 it was it was Right around the time they really started picking up steam, 2014, 2013, somewhere in there. Um, so that's what I was interested in. So that's what I started looking at. Right. Okay. So, so I'm on the Black Lives Matter Foundation website, but it's on something called GodStar.org. Yeah, GodStar is the, um, it's like a nonprofit registration verification and certification agency and they give out certain stars and recommendations and all kinds of other things for nonprofits that send in information for transparency purposes mm -hmm. they're also the the national database that a lot of organizations use when they're giving out services to nonprofits like they they look for your profile and guide star they process payments and all of that but that whatever you're finding there is something that somebody in the organization intentionally submitted to them. So it's a pretty, in my opinion, it's a pretty rep reputable place to look for okay. information. Okay. So, and I'm glad we covered that the way we did, because that kind of changes things a bit from the original thought or the original discussion we you and I had the other day about, money being donated to black lives matter because i was thinking it was in terms of the money being donated to the black lives matter organization or the i guess the movement that we all think of that's what i was thinking and that's how it was that's how some of the articles and things were were presenting it yeah um so the the to my knowledge the Black Lives Matter movement, the the legal name of it is the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation or something like that. Mm. Or maybe that's the foundation. But um, so you got the Black Lives Matter Global Foundation, Global Network Foundation. Um, and then you have the Black Lives Matter 
foundation foundation if i'm if i'm if i'm understanding it correctly because like i said again i didn't look too much into the actual foundation right right i got you but right. the black lives matter movement from what i understand is not actually called the black lives matter movement Right. It's called the legally it's called the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation, but it goes by Right. And I'm looking at it right now. So that's why You're on I the sound website. a lot more sure. Yeah. Yeah, that's me why too. I sound a lot more sure. Um, uh, but it goes so the Black Lives Matter movement that was started in twenty thirteen uh -huh. as a response to the Trayvon Martin situation goes by right. the Black Lives Matter Is Global it Network Global Network Foundation Incorporated. Right. Right. Okay. This other foundation was started by a 67-year-old somebody named Robert Barnes. And um, I believe his name was Robert Barnes. I'm scanning this thing right now. Anyways, he, he, he admits. So let me read this, what it says. And this is from BuzzFeed. Um, it says Barnes acknowledged to BuzzFeed News that his organization has a very different mission than the Black Lives Matter movement currently changing the country. We don't want to be enemies of the police. We will let the movement do that, the music producer said. We want to get to a point to where we have programs, and that's where the change will happen. That's where we come in. While his organization has existed for five years, Barnes has yet to launch any of the programs because it's taken him a while to outline a real plan of action. One such idea is have a cup with a cop. Local meetings where residents would chat with police officers over coffee and donuts. So, okay, before we even get to that dumb shit. <laughs> Fuck out of here, man. So... People are thinking that they're donating to the Black Lives Matter movement, right? But they're that donating to the Black Lives Matter Foundation to some dude who wants to patch up the relationship between Black people and police by sitting down with police, but not necessarily eradicating the systematic racism within the police departments, but sit down and try to be friends with the police. So I want so. We get shot with a cannon, but he want to put a Band-Aid on it. Okay. All right. But, but so people are donating to this, to this foundation who ain't doing shit, but they think they're donating to Black Lives Matter, which in turn is causing the uproar between the different chapters who feel like, hey, y'all got all this money, but ain't nobody seen his money. Well... It, to, from my perspective, it's a little bit deeper than that because there's always been, especially on Reddit, there's always been a level of a scrutiny that the National Black Lives Matter movement has gotten from the local chapters and from the local communities about, you know, because the Black Lives Matter movement pulls in millions and millions of dollars a year, even before the surge. It was mm -hmm. pulling in millions and millions of dollars. And there's always been scrutiny over the lack of transparency. Where is that money going? What is it being spent on? Right. Now, Black Lives Matter does have people in various Reddit posts giving outlines about what they're doing with the money. But the mm -hmm. outlines are never sufficient. You know, it's, it's always like um, we're, we're involved in uh, digital networking and organization and community outreach and developing our chapters and and all of that stuff is like yeah but what is, what the fuck does any of that mean and how much money are you putting towards any of that stuff because developing your chapter could mean giving uh, somebody that's doing whatever in whatever city a pay raise of a hundred thousand dollars a year or something like that not saying they're doing that but just saying that you could legitimately say that that is, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Developing your chapter. You're bringing yeah. people on board. Yeah. So I think this does highlight a discrepancy. It does show just how many people are utilizing the Black Lives Matter movement. Are the Black Lives Matter the death of black people to right. 
build a legacy and get rich without doing much of anything. And, and look, I'm well, gonna we say talked this about too. that the other day. We, that's one thing we talked about the other day, not to cut you off, but no, go people ahead. people being labeled as leaders, organizations being seen as leading organizations who were doing nothing more than just creating or having rhetoric, talking points and all this thing. They they're doing they're doing things that don't lead to real tangible outcomes for black people as far as improvement. Right, absolutely not. And and like the only thing I was gonna say is people can feel however they want to feel about it. I haven't seen any tangible results from the Black Lives Matter movement either. So I view both of these, the foundation and the movement, kind of in the same light. If I'm being totally well, honest, I, I think I think a lot of these organizations, especially ones in the spotlight, they get credit. They get credit for doing what grassroots organizations do on a regular basis. Oh well, we feed people. We feed people. Right. We we help people get bills paid. We help people get. I mean, they're they're organ they're grassroots organizations across the country, across the world, who do these things on a regular basis. Who nobody gives a damn about. They show up to your event and don't give a damn about none of that stuff. But let a a an organization with a huge profile, huge platform, huge name do it, and the world has been shaking shaking up. And it's like you got folk in your community doing this all the time. Yeah, um, in my opinion, they get credit for just existing and being big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The fact like, that you was able to to become popular, that popular, now we got to give you credit. Right, because you hear, like, the number one thing people say when you challenge them on the tangibility of benefits from the Black Lives Matter movement is they say the conversation. Just by them existing, we're able to have a conversation. And that to me goes back to the whole Jay Z thing, where you know my presence is a gift. Bitch, if your presence was a gift, black people would be saved. Matter of fact, if if that Super Bowl initiative or that NFL initiative was real, black people still ain't safe. Jay Z, you and Roger Goodell, y'all say it's time yeah. to get past Nelly. Uh, no, because nothing's changed. <laughs> Like nothing's changed, nothing has gotten better. Nobody's nobody's safer because of the social programs supposedly that Jay Z and the NFL are rolling out or have created. Nobody's safer. Yeah, I mean, and, I'm 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 with it. Go ahead. No, I'm just saying when you when you because people got to be careful about the the lanes that they try to take. You have to be careful about the the initiative that you take. Because when you partner with the NFL to help social issues, the social issues surrounding why Colin Kaepernick took a knee, which was to bring more attention to police violence against black people. So you're basically saying me and the NFL are getting together to make things better with black people and the police. And since y'all done that, scores of black people have been killed and we ain't heard nothing from y'all so it's that's what i'm saying you got to be careful like the initiatives and things that you take so like all these organizations and all these things here is understanding understanding how you put yourself out there but also on the other end people if you want to donate to an organization make sure you do your research make sure you do your research because yeah. you donate to some dude who ain't trying to do nothing and I think that's the biggest issue with all of this is if you were donating to your lo to a local organization, you wouldn't have to worry about getting tricked. You know what I'm saying? Like, even with even if you do want to donate to the Black Lives Matter movement, donate to the local office, the local branch. Like, well, don't donate to the national headquarters. Um, and I I think that's the thing. Like, even with PACs. PAX has people working all over the country. But yeah. if you want to donate to PAX specifically, then there's an option for you to, to, to leave a comment in there about um, where you want your funds to go and what you want your funds to be used for. Right. Like, take, wow. I, think, I think just in general, you should take that approach. 
And if yeah. you don't see anything in your area, then, I mean, you can still donate to national offices if you just really love an organization, then, you know what I'm saying? Show your support, no matter yeah. where they are. But if you want to see real change immediately, I think you got to, like, on a local level, you got to do your research and, and donate to local organizations. Damn, he said it. I don't disagree. All right, so that was our mention. You know, just want to, to discuss it a bit because I know that's something that we had already been talking about. Ass mention. I know. We kind of got caught up in it. But. All right, so Brandon Bernard was executed not too long ago by state of Indiana, the Federal Correctional Center in Terry Hart, Indiana. Bernard was 40 years old, one of five, and they have him labeled as a gang member. I don't know. But according to this article, they have him labeled as a gang member who was convicted in Texas of killing Stacy and Todd Bagley. And they have to point out who were youth ministers in 1999. So you see how they do that though, the black men gang member. They were youth ministers. Like that make it like like that make it worse. Right. <laughs> a death is a death, right? The gunman Christopher Violava was executed in September while other co-defendants were given lesser sentences. Bernard was pronounced dead at 9 27 p.m. He was the youngest person in the United States to receive the death sentence in nearly 70 years for a crime committed when he was an adolescent. Bernard said he had been waiting for his chance to apologize to the family of the Bagleys and his own family for the pain he caused. Um, let's see. Jo uh, Georgia Bagley spoke to reporters within 30 minutes of the execution and became emotional when she spoke about Bernard and Valiva's apologies. The apology and remorse helped me very much. Yada, yada, yada. Bernard's execution was scheduled this fall by the government. It was the ninth execution since Attorney General William Barr announced restarting federal executions after the 17-year hiatus. Um, so this was a high-profile case. Bernard's case has been brought to the spotlight for months, grabbing headlines and the attention of both politicians and celebrities who wanted the execution to be stopped. And I'm going to just stop it right there and then read some yada. more when we come back to it. Yada, yada, yada. So... The first thing that come to mind when I'm reading this is their their America goes again being America, because America can find a way to uphold the law to the fullest extent when it comes to black people, but with white people, not so. Like how the hell is? I'm not saying he shouldn't be punished for his crimes, but I do ask the question, like I said earlier, how the hell is Charles Manson still alive? And this man being executed. Like Tookie Williams got killed, but Charles Manson is still alive. That this this gentleman, Bernard, Brandon Bernard, is being executed. But Charles Manson, Dylan Roof, all these other white boys, they still alive. I mean, we understand we understand people need to be punished for their crimes. But can we get some 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 got like be consistent? Be consistent. Because you need to line a whole bunch of white boys up and start getting executed. Like right get now. Execute. I'm just saying because if you're going to execute us, execute everybody. But we know why yeah. they don't. Yeah, I'm with you on that though. Uh, I, I, I'm I, not going to sit here and lie and say I'm not a I'm opposed to the death penalty because I'm not. I'm not mm -hmm. opposed to the death penalty. And that's that's my opinion. That's my choice. So get off my nuts for all of y'all that's already on my nuts. Right, um, right, right. My thing is, I, I oppose it in America. Because the system is... There's a lot of inequity in the system. The system's right. broken. It doesn't work. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. If if my people are going to be more likely to get the harshest punishments for, and usually for lesser crimes, 
Yeah. Then I'm not in favor of harsher. I'm not in favor yeah. of those harsher punishments. Because he he it, it, it specifically said he wasn't the gunman. He wasn't the person who actually killed the person. He was a part of committing the crime, though. But it, you know, we both know it when the. Uh, yeah. We I clearly know. see like it doesn't even matter. You know what I'm saying? Well, especially if you're black, it doesn't matter. Yeah, like. If he was white, maybe not being the gunman would be enough to get him some mercy or some leniency. Well, we, well, we all know you could be a white boy, get caught raping somebody, and get a slap on the wrist. Yeah, I mean, or you can go into a black church and, and, and kill multiple people and get hamburgers. You know, get Burger King. Because you said you were hungry. Right. <laughs> right. Like, how, ma how many uh them black people that they didn't beat up main shot up or whatever do they stop by the you know the, the local fast food like, to pick up the, something to eat the, the white boy who killed two people in Kenosha after the um after the um was it nah not Ahmaud Arbery um during the basketball season when they did the walkout from the young man who was killed in, in Milwaukee mm. and the white boy went he had AR-15 in Kenosha and shot and killed two people they making excuses for him. He was protecting this and this. Man, stop that. If that was a black person, y'all wouldn't y'all wouldn't be saying that. And that's right. my thing with it. Like you saying, like the, the justice system is full of shit and it was it was created by some bitches. Yeah. Yeah. So. And again, like I said, it's it's not that I'm against law and order or I'm against capital punishment or any of that stuff. I'm just against it in a system that's inherently broken right so so this is saying kim kardashian called for trump to grant a commun uh, commutation for bernard uh ayanna presley uh brought awareness to legislation she introduced last year to end the death penalty at the federal level jesse jackson called on the president to commute the sentence um and pardon all the inmates um, scheduled for execution and 23 elected and former prosecutors filed for amicus brief on Wednesday in support of Bernard's appeal due to allegations of some word right now that I can't pronounce right now, misconduct. Okay. <laughs> After a lower judge court denied Bernard's motion to uh, to stay the execution on Wednesday, the Seventh, court, Seventh Circuit of Court Appeals denied an emergency motion and the U.S. Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia Circuit also denied the appeal on Thursday, according to court documents. So you have uh, attorneys Alan Dershowitz and Ken Starr joined Bernard's legal team on late Thursday and had to file a petition with the Supreme Court requesting that to delay the execution for two weeks so they could get up to speed on Bernard's case. So basically, they're just saying the, the case became high profile because you had a lot of celebrities and, and well-known right people in the legal field who were working on Bernard's have to at least have it postponed. And like I said, Kim Kardashian reached back out to Donald Trump to say, hey, let's get this person out. But, you know, Donald Trump already reached his quota. He already, he let one black, he helped one black person get out. <laughs> he reached his quota. He reached his quota. <laughs> I mean, that's all you got to do to be like, I help black people. I think Donald Trump, you got to remember, he helped he you know that 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 lady that he did let out yeah he didn't get a significant bump in black approval after he did that you think she voted for him well she probably i mean depending on what state she in mm -hmm. uh but i think donald trump when he didn't get no no bump in support amongst the black population for doing that he was like fuck y'all niggas i ain't doing shit else yeah, he thought it was gonna get a lot more, especially a lot of that stuff that you're seeing online with the, especially you got young black Republicans and all these people, Trump, Trump, Trump. And then, yeah, they didn't. Those folk didn't either didn't vote, or they were just capping. One, two. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah. But, but you know, like I was saying earlier, we have another black man who has been punished to the fullest extent for his crime. In a country where we have white men who they need to make their mind up if that's something that they feel like doing this time to the white dude for the white people. And that's that bullshit. It really Just, is. Let's be equal across the board. If you're gonna do this to the black people, do this to the white people. Now we know we understand, trust me, we understand why they don't. 
but yeah, and I mean, no reasonable explanation. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. No, just just, but for the for the sake of this particular story, and just overall, because we know this is something that black people are talking about, black people are paying attention to. Not, it's not the it's not the story story, but it's something that has been talked about in black circles, and we have to we have to analyze everything that's happening because if it happens to him, it could happen to you. Right. So, yeah, man. It affects us all. Anything else you want to add on this? Do DNA say get money, drink water? Who? Nothing. Was that a, was that a battle rap lyric? No, nah, but he is a battle rapper, but that ain't a battle rapper. Uh, you had me all confused. <laughs> about anything else you want to add to my dude DNA? Who? I thought you was talking about they found some DNA from Brandon Bernard or something. That's, that's nah, what I'm nah. Okay. Okay. Nah. You want to spit a you want to spit a lyric real quick? Hey, did you say that he had been executed? Yeah, he's executed. Okay. Yeah. I was gonna make a joke, but it'd be in poor taste since he's been executed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Unless you want to be like Howard Stern. No, nah, I got, I got some standards. There are a few lines I won't cross. Good, 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 good. good. Hey man, did you see that weak ass uh, Saturday Night Live skit they did with Doctor Fauci? No. Nah, did you I post didn't. that in the line group? Somebody did. Somebody post. Or did I just find that shit? I think you might have, because I ain't seen, I seen like a thumbnail of Dr. Fauci on Saturday Night Live, but I haven't like Don't seen watch that the shit. video. Don't watch that shit. Yeah, you, you would not, you would sit there straight face like a mug. You would not laugh. Well, I All mean, right. he ain't funny though, is he? No, it's the, it's the, it's they have a lady playing him, a lady, you know, imitating Dr. Fauci on Saturday Night Live. Not like funny that. at all. All right, so black people and COVID-19 vaccine. This is a big one because we're going to, we talked about this before. We're going to go into it a little more about the uh, black people's distrust with the COVID-19 vaccine or just with vaccines overall because of the Tuskegee experiment. But we're going to get into that. And we all, like I said, we're also going to get into the the woman. Our thoughts on the woman, the black woman who, who on all of social media and TV taking the vaccine. Don't nobody give a shit about her taking that vaccine. Let me just say that off the top. <laughs> you could shit. You could put my mom on TV taking the vaccine. I don't give a fuck. That's not going to convince me to do anything. Right. But before we get to that, so. A document released on December 8th ahead of the Vaccines and Related Biological Products Advisory Committee, VRBPAC, what they call themselves for short because they lames, uh, they had a meeting on December 10th <laughs> that revealed more details about the Pfizer, uh, specifically the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine. And that's something that needs to be pointed out. At least three, we know at least three companies so far have put out a vaccine. We know at least five or six companies are or at least two to three more companies are looking to put out vaccines in the future. But right. this vaccine that we are talking about now is specifically the Pfizer vaccine. So each company, each company's vaccine will be constructed differently. Right. So that just that needs to be distinguished. So this Pfizer vaccine is the first to be is expected to be the first to be authorized for emergency use in the u.s so according to that document that was released um four cases of bell's palsy have been identified bell's palsy is a condition that causes temporary facial paralysis uh they said none of the participants who receive oh it said they were identified the study participants who received the vaccine. None of the participants developed Bell's palsy who only got a placebo. Um, they said at least one patients have recovered. It said, and they're also, so they're trying to come behind and say there's no evidence that the vaccine caused Bell's palsy. Um, so, like, 
when I hear that though, I'm not saying they lying. <laughs> I'm not saying you lying. But if these motherfuckers didn't start developing this shit until they took the vaccine, you got to understand why there's a lot of distrust and why a lot of people looking at that shit sideways. Like, come on now. Come on now. All right. I'm cool. I drank this bottle of water. And now I ain't cool no more. I'm going to think the water did it. I'm just saying, I've been good all day. I've been good all day. Now I drank this water. And now I'm fucked up. Yeah. When one plus one equal two in my world. Now I'm not saying that that doesn't call that the vaccine, the Pfizer vaccine specifically causes Bell's palsy, but you got to give us more than we can assure you that there's no link. All right. Or well, you got to prove it though. Yeah. Yeah. I would be interested. And I haven't really looked into this, you know, full transparency up front. I have heard about it and I'm looking at it, um, but um, from what I've seen, I haven't seen anything that was like really break down that there is no link. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you said, if they were if they didn't develop symptoms until symptoms until after they took the vaccine, if that part is true, then there is a link. <laughs> right <laughs> like however tenuous it may be there is in fact a link there now you might be able to prove that it wasn't the vaccine it was something else that coincided with the same time they started the vaccine that's true but I haven't seen anything to that effect yet man look here like you said though if it didn't happen before and it happened now linkage like a motherfucker right <laughs> so, so for those who are like who haven't looked up Bell's palsy, just only you, you, you know it through conversation. So Bell's palsy is caused by an impairment of the seventh, seventh cranial nerve of the facial nerves. It can result, it can result from trauma, but more commonly occurs due to viral infection of the nerve itself. So even explain like that don't help what they're saying. So all right, Bell's palsy is caused by viral infection. <laughs> now once again i'm not saying that that the vaccine causes bell's pause but what we are doing is breaking down how it's been presented to us yeah and it's been you know because the, the just the way it's being presented and the way they're trying to clean it up just don't sound good it, it doesn't sound good so yeah, we i keep going back to scientists in all fields need to do a better job of translate translating the science to the masses you keep letting these media outlets do it and people ain't gonna never trust y'all right so according to this it's saying thirty-eight thousand people have been examined with the pfizer vaccine and only four cases of bell's palsy have occurred thus far which is you know not bad statistics to be real in no, a in a not. trial because we're still talking about trial phases too now. And that's one thing I want people to wrap their mind around and understand. We're still talking about the COVID vaccine in the trial stage. Right. So you go through a trial, like we said, like we talked about last time we talked about this, you go through a trial to work out the kinks. Now, on the other hand, putting the information out, which they are supposed to be transparent as possible. We know they're not putting out everything. Right. But it doesn't help eliminate the skepticism black people have with the medical industry or vaccines. It doesn't help. And I bet you it's gonna be it's gonna be a rise. I don't know how much of a rise. It's gonna be a rise in the book of med uh medical apartheid, though. People are gonna be reading, see, see this book, see this book. You got medical apartheid and you got acres of skin. Those are two two good books to read about the maltreatment of the medical industry toward black people. So I do recommend reading those books, but also another thing that's causing a lot of uproar and side eye from black people is the idea of this is Tuskegee all over again. I know we talked about it before, but we got to talk about it again because people really are headstrong. Like, like on Instagram the other day, um, 
people's people's evidence that the Tuskegee experiment was black people being injected with syphilis was YouTube videos. That's literally where we are today. People are so damn lazy that their research doesn't go past YouTube videos. Can we get into some articles? Can we get into some medical journals? Can we get to some scholarly information that will back up to say, hey, this is what it is. I don't care what Buddy said on YouTube. I don't care what Buddy said on their blog. Can we get some scholarly information, though? Like, y'all got to stop with y'all ragged-ass, lazy-ass research that y'all doing and thinking y'all smart because you find another dumbass to agree with you. Yeah, I, I, I'm I, not on a lot of social media, but the social media I am on, I muted most of it and hid most of it because this whole to and i'm like yo there are a plethora of other examples out there of black people being injected with stuff here in north carolina there's you know historical verified proven information that suggested that um they were sterilizing black women through injections right like like in that stuff like that is literally all over the country in the history book in most eras but the i the fact that instead of ignoring all of that truth that would prove a point we jump to this one thing and make it a lie and if you don't believe it you're a dumbass that's what like, people you get attacked if you get attacked if you challenge somebody on the point because you don't right, do I'm research like, right right like that, like even even the black historians that um, cause cause you know I get everybody want to say you can't trust white people telling yeah that's fine I get that that's why I usually present people with history from a black person from a black but, but, historian. But let, let we got to we we got to stop there because white people were the custodians of black history during the times of stress when 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 black people got colonized. Who you think got access to the information? So a lot of these black historians had to go through white mediums to get to some of this black information. And they, some of them will tell you that. Yeah, like we understand that. And, and the credible ones will definitely tell you that some of the ones that are most popular in <clears throat> the black spaces, like the John Henry Clark and the Dr. Benz and the... They will be open and honest about the fact that they got some of their information from white sources. Um, because at the end of the day, information is information. How you sprinkle it or how you, you know, how you present it is up to you and your perspective of it. So you can take the whitest piece of information out there and change the perspective and all of a sudden it's black history. But like my thing is, I haven't seen any credible verifiable verifiable credible sources that agree with this notion that they were taking perfectly healthy black people off the street and injecting them with syphilis yeah you can't find that like I, like i got i almost i had to catch myself one of the young girls that was on that that thread that the people talking about and she said she done her own research and haven't come up with any information to prove but she thinks she need to look deeper Baby, trust your inf trust your why do you why did why don't you trust your own research? Because it don't agree with what her and what she thinks and what all of her friends are saying. So you that means you don't know how to research? That means people are I don't want to say weak, but peer pressure is a motherfucker, right? Like it's hard to stand on that ledge and be by yourself. But what's the first rule of research? First rule of research is to trust your own research. People, people trust people, but you got to think about it too, right? In order for you to trust your own research, you have to have a level of confidence that a lot of people just don't have. I see that. I, like, I, I, I see that. Yeah. Like even if you, pre even when you present the truth to these people, source after source after source, they still find a way to discredit it and hang on to the belief they have. Now, the interesting part is when you're talking to people one on one, they'll change their opinion. Yeah. When it's yeah. a group of them. Yeah. Then yeah, they. Yeah. But it's like 
my my and I talked we talked about it last time and reiterated my issue with black people's total just I guess their our our the way the way black America is looking at the vaccines. You got a large you got large sections of black America who are not who don't give a damn about protecting themselves from this virus. Right. They're not wearing masks. Right. They're still congregating. Like I'm, I can scroll through social media now. They got youth events all over the place for youth. We're not saying there, there are certain ways you can serve your community during the time of COVID. But you can't be out here acting like it's like we was pre-COVID. So a, lo- a lot of black people who I've come across who were who distrust the medical system and distrust the uh the vaccine are out here living like COVID ain't real. It ain't real. We don't give a damn about no COVID and we're not taking the vaccine. And we already got all these different disparities. And for a lot of y'all people, guess what? The reason why the the vaccine pretty much is the only other option is because y'all dumbasses wouldn't sit down for two to three weeks. If you were to sit your monkey asses down for two to three weeks, maybe more, maybe less, and let the virus die down, we would be in a different position. But guess what? I We've been told y'all. We've been told y'all. If we act like we can't protect ourselves, they're going to start making decisions for us and thinking for us. Here we are. Congratulations. You played yourself, like you, like Ebro said. You played yourself. Congratulations. Yeah, it's it's the self-fulfilling prophecy, right? Um, I don't trust these crackers. They always try to do something to us. This virus, this shit ain't real. I'm going to just live my life and do me. So and you the shit get out, yeah, the shit get out of hand. You get it or whatever. Man, I still don't trust this shit. You know, we got to do something, but I ain't going to shit still. I bet they're going to come out with a vaccine soon and that shit going to be poison. But I still ain't going to sit still. Shit keep getting worse. Now they got a vaccine. It's just a matter of time before they mandate everybody take it. But I still ain't gonna sit still. But but also I want people to realize though how detrimental it would be to the economy to just take out a large population of, of Americans. Yeah, but we don't even we don't even cause I'm gonna be honest. The type of black people that you're talking to that 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 think that black extermination is the total goal. That argument is foreign to them. Like they don't, because they feel like, I think somewhere deep in their core, they honestly feel like black people aren't of any value to society. So if they kill us all off, it won't hurt anything. Then they would have been dead. What they waiting on? Like I said, why wait till the world is watching to try to kill off all black people now? I mean, I don't think it's the smartest thing. If I was trying to exterminate a group of people, I certainly wouldn't Bruh. do it when the whole world is watching. Bruh. So the same the same stock of people who wiped out all full-blooded Tasmanians, who's been known to wipe out whole populations of people, when it come to us, oh, we're going we gonna to wipe y'all out slow drip style. No, you have a, the same stock of people who have a history of decimating populations of people. Why they ain't doing that now? I'm just saying, but you know, not to get too far left with it, but I, I would like people to. I'm not now. We've said it before. We we are side eyeing the whole process of the vaccine yeah. creation because it happened fast. It happened a little too fast for me. Yeah, so me I'm, too. I'm not. T- I'm not totally against taking the vaccine, but I am against taking the vaccine anytime soon. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, and the the lady that took the vaccine, like, first off, we oh, understand yeah, why they her, put a black her. face on it because black they people here. didn't participate in the trials. Black people are a leading group that is vocalizing that they're not going to take the vaccine. 
black people at this moment are at an increased risk of complications when they do get it and they are at an increased risk of getting it um so there's a lot of things happening in the black community that i think prompted them to put a black face on the first pers- first person to get yeah. the vaccine yeah. but even all of that like i i I understand the way propaganda works because I know there are people out there that are going to say that, you know, propaganda, propaganda, propaganda. I'm not saying the propaganda angle is wrong. I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is this is a black show talking to black people. We got to be honest with ourselves. We put ourselves in this position by refusing to sit still. Right. So everything that happens now is on us. Yeah. Everything that happens from, 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 I say from the summer forward is on black people. Every last single bit of it. I'm sorry. It is. Man, we, we got to be, we got to be real to ourselves. Like if we, if we take the virus more seriously, like, like I was in, I was in the store the other day, you know, a lady, she got, she got a mask on under her nose. The sun don't have a mask on at all. So if he get COVID and it affects him greatly, or he even almost dies or dies, you're going to be mad. But you as the adult is allowing your child to walk around with no mask on. Like I was, um, it's the show I Am Athlete that's been on YouTube with Brandon Marshall, Channing Crowder, Fred Taylor, uh, Chad Johnson, it's probably like the best, well, second best sports show on YouTube behind the Fixed Sports Podcast. Let's let's just establish that yeah, right now. But the boy, yeah, keep it real. But but it's the best show from an athlete's perspective, right? And Channing Crowder was talking about how he because he missed the last two shows, the last two weeks of the show. He was talking about how he his family caught it. And he was saying his wife had gone to the hospital with respiratory issues. She, out of out of the four of them, she was the only one who had it real, real bad. He said he he lost the the most it did to him was lost his sense of taste and smell. But his wife had to be on the ventilator in the hospital. That's scary. That that got to be a scary thing to see your wife like that. For anybody who really gives a damn about the wife, and I'm sure he does, but I'm sure that was scary for him. Yeah. But and, and, scared, yeah. And but it just makes me I'm I'm j i am i am just get upset when I see black people who are already subject to all these other disparities who just not taking this thing serious. Right. Right. And and like my thing is you can blame white supremacy to an extent, but we got to, like, white people are going to do what they do. Yeah. At the end of the day, you got to take responsibility. And in this situation, in this particular situation, we are not taking responsibility and doing what we need to do. I'm seeing, like, you know, I'm seeing pictures of people posting up about youth sports leagues, all black kids in the in the goddamn, in the, in the competition. All black kids. No masks, no nothing. Um people putting up footage of themselves going in the stores with their babies and whatnot, no mask on the baby. And I know people are like, why are you supposed to put a mask on a baby? If you can't figure that out, you shouldn't Don't have take your baby goddamn out. Baby in there. Right. Like you shouldn't have your baby out. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like the baby's the baby's immune system is not as strong as an adult's immune system. So you're talking about somebody who is more vulnerable to the virus you like, we ain't gonna put no mask on you because you a baby. I never understood that dumb stuff about adults. Adults always act like the younger people are just not susceptible to the stuff. Because it's like, these are the same people who will kiss a newborn in the face but won't let you kiss them in the face. Yeah. Well, why won't you let me kiss you in your face? Because I don't know where your lips been, but you're gonna put them same ragged ass lips that nobody knows been on a baby's face? So it's the same mindset of people who are out here with this COVID and all these things here. And then, like you say, on top of that, so so the powers that be, the big farm and all these, like they 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 put that black lady out there, like we was talking about the other day. They keep running the same play because they keep working. 
why stop running the play if it worked? So, yeah, you got some people who are seeing this black lady and like, man, fuck out of here, like us. But then there are some people who see that black lady, well, hell, she seemed like a nice person. She's articulate. She's well-spoken. She's mm -hmm. taking it. I should take it, too. I mean, why you think they had Obama come out and talk about, hey, man, take the vaccine? They're like, Obama, these Negroes don't want to take this stuff. Well, I'll mm -hmm. do it. I'm not give a fuck about what you're saying either, bro. <laughs> I guess you find out your clout ain't what it was either, huh? Well, so, I mean, there are going to be people that's going to take it. I think the yeah. majority, of, I do think eventually the majority of the community will take it. Um, yeah, man, we know a lot of people lying. Yeah, like, I'm not going to take it for a while. Right. Uh, but that don't have nothing to do with the goddamn Tuskegee experiment. Like, don't have shit to do. If 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 anything, the Tuskegee experiment would be encouragement to take the fucking vaccine. Because if they had given those men the treatment for syphilis, they wouldn't have gone through what they went through. Like, this is the part, right? They had the treatment for the shit. They refused to give it to them. The other part is... There was black medical personnel and black institutions involved in the experiment. Y'all are honing in on the wrong shit. Hey. To, so, to, to bring it all the way back. So this is, let me, let me share this. Let me screen share this. Oh, what you screen sharing? You gonna That's mess up my editing process. For real. I don't know. Let me just real quick because this is the picture this picture right here is like the one that people are using to say that this is like actual footage of the tuskegee experiment so now i don't know the origins of these pictures and where these pictures come from and all these i just know these are the pictures that people are using to say this is the tuskegee experiment see this is what happened you see them injecting people with things so now, once again, people people are not saying where the where the actual photos come from. So, I don't but know. here's the thing, right? They were drawing blood. Needles are used for drawing blood. They were also giving people placebo treatments. Yeah, they were. That that's how they kept that and to me and not to me to, to most people that have looked at it that is the inhumane aspect of the pictures or of the experiment was that these men were told that they were being given treatment mm -hmm. and they weren't right. yeah, but like like I say this is this is what this is what people are using to say uh, and those those images are what people are using to say this is the Tuskegee experiment. So, that's but why anyway. I can pull up an image of Beyonce and say this is what my wife looked like ten years ago. That don't make it true, right? So, and they and the CDC has this timeline of t the Tuskegee. The Tuskegee timeline is what they call it on the CDC. So, but you know, y'all can go check it out on the CDC website. It's a Tuskegee timeline. You know they so. ain't gonna believe nothing they see on the CDC website. Man, look, people believe the CDC when they want to believe the CDC. Cause CD, the CDC also put out a study that say black men are the most black men are most likely to take care of their children out of all the fathers care. in the United States. Right. You don't hear people disputing that. People, look, with these statistics and stuff, you got to remember, man, people believe what they want to believe when it's advantageous for them. And a lot of these same people will not do the research. So let's just put that out there, too. People believe look, what they want to believe when they want to believe it. Because they say, I we don't believe none of these white people say. Stop lying. You do believe what these white people say when it helps you you do yeah when they say something you agree with you believe it but yeah i guarantee you a lot of people didn't even realize that that black father or that fatherhood study came from the cdc right yeah, um uh kevin samuels 
I was listening to him uh, this morning, matter of fact. And that's, he, he, you know, he going back and forth with the lady. She was like, no, yesterday. Most black men don't take care of their kids. Like we was talking about that role lady saying most black people don't take care. Of, uh, white people even saying black people are most like uh, are the more active fathers out of all fathers. Stop that. Stop with that narrative that black men don't take care of their kids. Let's stop that today. That's that bullshit. It is. It really is. So now that that we're not saying that there ain't no bullshit men out there with that. Then we got to go across the across the spectrum of of humanity and men. I mean, if the CDC report, and I believe the report is from, it's a couple years old now, but even in that, um, and I actually went over the report in my book, The Chasm, but if the CDC report is to be believed, you are actually better off having a baby with a black man. Right. I'll, I'll just say this. Most of the black men that I know who have children are active fathers in their kids' lives. And most of the most of my friends grew up with fathers. So yeah. All right. So move on. Last topic. Water is now a commodity that, that's going that's being traded in the market <clears throat> as a future. And some are saying that's because we're coming up on this water scarcity, scarcity issue. And they're betting they're going to use the market and put water as a commodity in the future on the market to bet on when the water runs out. That's that bullshit, ain't it, Pat? Yeah. Um... Yeah. yeah, it's 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 this is going to be interesting to see how it rolls out, because while water is a finite resource a fresh you know fresh water is definitely a finite resource that doesn't mean that it's not an abundant resource right so it's always interesting it's always going to be interesting to me to see how the market is going to price it yeah and to see how people go about playing the scarcity game with it Right, right. Um, yeah, well, yeah. That's that's one thing that really stuck out to me is like first water being a future, water being a commodity that's traded. Air gonna be next, watch. But yeah, but it, but it, it, it. That means, but we've uh, we've we've heard this before. It's not new that we're coming up on a water shortage. Uh, I remember reading an article about a black man who created an invention to help purify water. So we can have drinkable water because, like you said, water is a water is finite, but that doesn't mean we can't run out of the water that we need because it's fresh water that we need to be able to survive. Right. So. Yeah, I just think it's going to be interesting how the whole thing plays out. I don't agree with it. I don't like it, but it is going to be interesting to see how it plays out and what price is going to settle in at you know, and what's going to regulate that price. Because, like, right now, in my opinion, the water scarcity all over the globe right now, because I think they're estimating that by 2025, two-thirds of the planet is going to be in a water, uh, mm -hmm. a drought. You said 2025, uh, right? Yeah, experiencing yeah. Uh, water scarcity. And I do, in a way, feel like a lot of that is not based on the fact that there isn't water, but based on the fact that the logistics for transporting water right. are not where they need to be. Um, right. So, you know, I, like I said, I think the bulk of the price for the commodity of water is actually going to be um, an analyzation of the logistics of moving water. And so mm -hmm. I'm just really curious to see how how that whole thing plays out. Yeah. So let me read some of this. It said, Wall Street has begun trading water as a commodity like gold or oil. The country's first water market launched on the Chicago Merchantile Exchange this week with $1.1 billion in contracts tied to water prices in California, according to Bloomberg News. The market allows farmers, hedge funds, and municipalities 
to hedge bets on the future price of water and water availability in the American West. The new trading scheme was announced in September, prompted by the region's worsening heat, drought, and wildfires fueled by climate change. There were two trades when the market went live Monday, and this article was put out December 8th. So that was last week. Climate change, droughts, population uh, growth, and pollution are likely to make water scarcity issues and pricing a hot topic for years to come. I agree with that. Um, RBC Capital Markets Managing Director and Analyst Danae Dre told Bloomberg, we are definitely going to watch how this new water futures contract develops. Proponents argue the new market will clear up some of the uncertainty around water prices for farmers and municipalities, helping them budget for the resource. But some experts say treating water as a tradable commodity puts a basic human right into the hands of financial institutions and investors, a dangerous agreement as climate change alters I mean, a dangerous arrangement as climate change alters perception patterns and increases water scarcity. But those people have to already understand water's already in those people's hands. Yeah. Well, you think you don't you go to the groceries unless you even if you got wells and stuff like your well, your water is still controlled by somebody else, not you. People got to remember that. But so. So when you hear like water, well, first of all, let me explain to people what futures are. Um, I'm sorry, I got a message. Um, what'd you say? Explain to people what futures are. So, uh, people, first off, I want everyone to tell me what they already know about futures. Go ahead and leave your uh, leave your comments. comment in the chat. Let me. We're gonna give you a little bit of time to um we're gonna give you a little bit of time to 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 um to let us know what you know about futures So, uh, comment number one, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, futures, to really just overly simplify it, is basically um, you make a bid on the price that something is going to be at some future period of time. And then um, if, it, if it hits that margin, then you get to reap the rewards of making the bid. If it closes out early, or if it doesn't hit that margin, or whatever the case might be, you lose money. That's a very overly simplified way, version or uh, idea of what futures is. But essentially, you're betting against, or you're betting that the price of something will be at a certain point, at some point in the future, i.e. futures. Bling. There it is. We have a right there that says, bing, bing. yeah. Like the more you know. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. So it just, um, my, fin my financial education increases every day. I try to learn something new about finance and education and managing money and becoming an extra billionaire every day. Um, so my understanding of the market and how things work um water is our like when they when they get to you saying hey we're looking at making water a future day water is already it's already they already got their stuff in place to make that happen um yeah. we do need to really start paying attention to our water supply and the shortage of water that's coming in the near future in the very near future, future. because Right. Because those of us who are like we just talked about disparities, right, with the COVID vaccine and the populations who are affected the most. But guess who's going to be affected the most when these water when this water shortage come? You're going to see you're going to see more people drinking sodas and all these other unhealthy right. things. They ain't got no water. 
people people who are in the right tax brackets gonna have more access to water, drinking water, bathing water. And I think, well, you know, I think we know this is something that we were not prepared for, even though people weren't paying attention. And we can't say it snuck up on people because they've been talking about water shortages coming, but people had their back turned, especially our people who weren't prepared for this, and here it is. So the question is with us, what we going to do? If a real water shortage, shortage really happens in the next five years or four years now, what the hell are we going to do as a people? I think it's kind of late for that because, like, I mean, we need to make a plan for what we're going to do about it. But it's kind of late, in my opinion, to prevent it from happening. Because that, you know, like, that's already, I mean, I did a show two years ago on water shortage. You know what I'm right. saying? Unless it's from the screen. So um, I think one of the things that we're going to have to deal with, because I think a lot of, and I think really a lot of people don't even under, know where their water comes from. They don't. A lot mo Most people really don't. I don't think most people really care. Be honest. Then that's why I say they don't know. It's not that they're stupid. It's just that they don't care. Like I don't care where my water comes from. Right. As long as I, long as, long as I feel good, I don't care where my water comes from. Right. So, um, and I think most people don't care what's in their water. Oh, as right. long as it tastes good. You know what I'm saying? Well, and for a lot of people too, that my water has to have taste or. Um, like I only drink smart. I remember having a conversation. I only drink smart water. Well, have you read the ingredients on the label? Water got ingredients. Go read your ingredients. That's why, like, I I think I may have drunk smart water like once or twice. I'm looking at it like, well, what the hell make the water smart? Why you got to make water smart? <laughs> and so now I have a I have a habit of when I pick up a water bottle, if there are ingredients, I ain't drinking. Yeah, like, I mean. Adding to my water. Why do you need to add that to my water? I mean, but that's the whole. And I know a lot. I rub a lot of people the wrong way when I get in my bag talking about stuff. But you know, the whole smart water, alkaline water, blah blah blah. Like all of that to me. I'm not saying there aren't any benefits to having vitamins and minerals in your water. There most certainly are. You know, and, and natural water picks those things up as it flows through the ground, flows over rock, float. Like, it's picking those stuff up, those things up naturally. And that goes into a conversation about, um, you know, artificial water in general. Or, like, you know, um, people want to talk about modified foodstuffs. You know, the water you buy, the alkaline water you buy out of the, the store, nine times out of ten is modified water. Like they added something to it after the fact, but that's not neither here nor there. Cause I don't really have a problem with modified food. So I'm not really getting into that. What I am saying though, is that, um, you know, water has already become a marketing game, right? Yeah. yeah. Like, like, like you said, smart water, uh, you got smart water, you got alkali water, you got mineral water, which is there's, the there's a whole water ever. industry. There's a right. whole water industry. So seeing futures, that don't surprise me. It's yeah, a whole already a whole industry. So, in terms of what we do about it, though, I think because here's the thing: you gotta understand too, like the aquifers that they're pulling this water from; those things are drying up. And when the water aquifers dry up, when the water table is so low that you can't pull anything from it, the ground starts to die. You start you start being able to produce anything on the ground. You know, the animals start to die. So it's a trickle effect. Um, and a lot of people don't realize that the natural aquifers that are already existing in their communities are being drained dry by yeah. bottling companies yeah. that are constantly yeah. looking for the next source to to, to produce their product. Um, and it's not being restocked because we're paving all of the roads. You know, uh, we're, we're putting up uh, houses that don't run off in the proper drainage systems. We're doing all of these things to prevent rainwater from becoming groundwater, which can then be utilized in the, in the natural water supply. And I think we got to do something about that. 
you know, people right. got to, I think we got to go back to, and this is just talking about repairing the system as a whole. Um, we might need to depave some roads. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. might need to, 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 even if we don't depave some roads, maybe remove some sidewalks from some roads so that the water drains off into the ground. Um, we might, into instead of into a drainage system or a ditch or something, we might need to do some of those things in terms of repairing the balance in terms of what black people can actually do about it. I think black people need to learn how to purify water that right. I, mean, I don't right. see any other alternative to learning how to purify water. And, right. and I don't mean like removing everything from the water because straight water is also not necessarily the healthiest thing to drink. If it's just pure H2O with nothing in it. Um, you want vitamins and minerals in your water. You know, you want to be getting those nutrients and things from your water. So not only do we have to learn how to purify the water, but we have to learn how to put the, the good stuff back in the water. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, it's just, it's a lot we got to learn about how to, how to take dirty water, um, and make it clean. I mean, even to the point of like, I think black people need to be trying to figure out how to um how to desalinate water, how to how to remove salt from water. Right, right. Or oh, how to use rainwater, how to uh, purify rainwater, all those different things. Um, because like the one of the black guys, he, if I remember correctly, the one of the inventions is able to take moisture out of the air and create water. Yeah, like we got it's a lot of stuff we need to start doing for ourselves, but we know we are too dependent upon things going the way they are and it not disrupting our natural flow because you can't you can't stunt and have a or have a hot girl summer when you got to go fetch water. It's different. So we want we want it's fun as the people who are the funniest to me, the people who want global environmental change. But they don't want it to the effect that it takes away their luxuries. Mm. So, so I'd be like, you full of shit then. I want to save the earth as long as it don't make me give up nothing. Because you hear a lot of people, uh, y'all, especially y'all, y'all people killing the earth because y'all buying bottled water as they, t as they text that from their cell phone which is killing the land and people to be to get that cobalt in the par parts of your phone. So you not understand how we all play a part in the fuckery. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I mean absolutely. So just want you know want people to stop capping. All right, so quick summary we talked we talked about um uh Black Lives Matter the the, the the lack of research people did and ended up donating money to the Black Lives Matter Foundation rather than the, no, the Black Lives, yeah, Black Lives Matter Foundation instead of donating to the Black Lives Matter overall organization. Then we talked about Brandon Bernard being executed, black man who was executed in his 40s for a crime he committed as an adolescent. And you know the the thing on that is we're not saying, but he shouldn't have been punished for his crimes. But if Charles Manson's still alive, then you know he should still be alive. Um, COVID vaccine, Pfizer's COVID vaccine is in the trial stages. Four people who've taken the trial version of the vaccine so far at the stage has developed Bell's uh, cerebral palsy or Bell's palsy in their face. Uh, they said. Four out of thirty-eight thousand. Uh, Wall Street is beginning to trade futures as well. I mean, Wa Wall Street is beginning to trade water as a future on the on the market in the commodity section of the market. Water is now a future, so we better get our stuff together. So that's a quick summary of the things that we covered in this episode of the Freedom Train Podcast Series. Y'all make sure y'all tune in every Wednesday right here on the Freedom Train Network at www.freedomtrainradio.com and leave them comments, holler at us, Joe at freedomtrainradio.com, Patrick at freedomtrainradio.com. We're here. We're on all major podcast outlets 
And we do it like that. It's your part and shot, Pat. You might have seen me in the street, but pimping. You don't know him. Right. Me, start sleeping with no drawers on. That's my part and shot. Sleep with no drawers Especially on. Especially if you're a... Uh... If you a married woman, yeah. Yeah. get yourself rigged. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Hey. Took, 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 took that thing up. Took, 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 took that thing up. <laughs> <laughs> He's Patrick. I'm Joseph. <laughs>